there travelers and welcome to my channel. I'm Shifty Nivy and if you enjoy goofy cozy gaming content then get your snacky snacks and snuggle in and if you want to keep up to date with all my shenanigans remember to do around. all the fun things and that like, just follows, the, the subscribes, all that good Fewish jazz because it appeases the algorithm archon and it keeps me in your feed. Okay so last we left off we were off to Port Olmos and we're supposed to be posing as academia students looking for something that was stolen. Uh, we don't really know what that thing is, but hopefully we will find out pretty soon. Uh, we did run into some academia students that told us it would cost us half, well, we were eavesdropping, dropping some eaves on some academia students, and they s were talking about how it was gonna cost half a million mora if we went to the tavern to Wherever purchase the in information this world I roam, on the stolen I thing that of my we home. don't know what the thing this is. Blade. But it is Without further ado, we're outside the, the tavern, so let's get into it. Boom and boom. Ta da! This is the place we heard those students talking about. Let's find a seat somewhere and see if we can spot the group they mentioned. Let's drop some eaves again. <laughs> We sit down and wait for some time. Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. So, they think that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boss? Ha! Huh. Once we reclaim the power of King Deshret, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. Ooh, there's that King Deshret name again. I want to know who this is. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time. So we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, he'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Okay, so King Deshra is a god, and we have a lot of infighting amongst the Ermites. Huh, all these guys talk about is King Deshra, so they're probably the ones we're looking for. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata. That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when King Deshred exacts vengeance on Sumeru, and all of them shall be punished. This is some piping hot tea. Yeah, Paimon was wondering what they meant too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. Sounds good. How did Greater Lord Ruka Devada betray King Deshret? I wonder. Oh, oh, we're just gonna straight up talk to him? Okay. Here we go. Huh? Who are you? What do you want? I'm a student from the academia. A student? <laughs> What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? I'm looking for info about a certain something. Ah, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Ouch. Oh, Paimon can't stand to see so much more ago. But there's no other choice right now. <laughs> Here, this is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? Okay. I just have one more question. Oh, that's right! We heard you mention King Deshret just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Uh, archaeology students! <laughs> nice save there, Paimon. <sighs> Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain el Ahmar are devout believers of King Deshret. Years ago, King Deshret founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present-day Sumeru. King Deshret was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. Oh, so King Deshret was the god of wisdom. Then he died, and later, uh, later, Greater Lord Rukadavada was the god of wisdom. 
then Kusanali came along. That's a lot of changing of the guard, if you know what I mean. So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed King Deshret's civilization. And our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. If what he's saying is true, then I can see why they're upset. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. King Deshret isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mark my words, our god shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. I don't think you should take it out on the current people or the current god. I mean, Ruka Devada's not here anymore. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of King Deshret. <laughs> Can you tell us more about this oracle? That's where I'm curious. I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. I tried. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. <laughs> We've been made. Huh? <sighs> you again? <laughs> Deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more you're worth. They already hey, took a lot of our more. Shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you, don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the Academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. I don't know, he looks like he could totally take you guys. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tavat. Ooh. Ooh. That line alone. Ooh. I... Ooh. That is a nice way of saying throw down. Throw down. If, on the other hand... We can't agree on any means of negotiation at all. Then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Eremite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Ooh, he is a very classy way of throwing some shade. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? He didn't stutter. Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go round and round. I don't mind. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 more to them. Yeah, give us our money back. You gave us faulty info. <laughs> Thank 
you. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh... Well... <laughs> someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Wow, he's throwing shade everywhere. Whoa, did you see that? He not only got us our Mora back, but sent the Emirates running too. Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask him questions. Yes, we have questions. We want answers. He went that way! After him! After him! Go. Wait. Wait up! It's Al Hatham, right? Al Hatham. What do you want? Uh, thank you for your help back there. First off, um, second off, we are looking for information, and it seems like you are in the same business. No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your Mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Goodbye. Hold up. Hold your horses! We still have something to ask you about! <sighs> Since you tore through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Um, <clears throat> certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? I'm a student from the academia. A student? <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. Okay, then perhaps we can talk terms? I know a thing or two about swordplay. I could be there at four o'clock. Huh? Oh, yeah! He's really strong! Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. He doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Oh, oh Maybe you not, face. but he can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... Um, I... Um... From guys like that! Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. This Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. Exactly. A little backup's always nice to have. You know, somebody in your corner, just in case. I can bring a healer. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> All right. I accept. Got a pen and paper? If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. Okay. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 Mora for something, and you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> not, when you put it like that, um, not the brightest necessarily, but it was the best info we had on the stolen item. And all we know is it's a stolen item. That's all Dia told us. <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. Okay. We know it's connected to the academia somehow, and that not only do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? It seems to be some kind of knowledge. You know almost everything there is to know, but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. It looks like a plant. Huh? Paimon can't tell what it is. 
It looks like some kind of ornament. This is a knowledge capsule. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Okay, but if we have the Akasha, why do we need a knowledge capsule? Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Anyone? Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules confer their contents without any requisites. Okay, so the Akasha is like the internet. It is heavily censored, so only certain people can access certain things. For instance, in some countries, if you search for a news network that is specific to a different country that they don't necessarily get along with, you're going to have a hard time finding it. You might find it eventually, but you're going to have a hard time finding it. The knowledge capsule is like a dark web page where there's no holds barred on whatever info is in the knowledge capsule if i'm understanding this right that's amazing it's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge unfortunately it's illegal in sumeru to privately possess or trade them oh and it's just as illegal <laughs> They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha, and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha, and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the Academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Okay, so there's there's a underground, well, a black market for canned knowledge. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless Academia students. Well... I think that about sums it up. Okay. I heard that the Academia lost something recently. It seems like it was probably a knowledge capsule. Oh, so that's your true objective. I want to learn more about it. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. Okay. Perhaps we can negotiate further? <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Okay. I'm okay with moving the conversation. What kind of wood do I get? Oh, I got two different types. That's handy. Oh, no, I don't want to climb the tree. I just want to go. punch the tree. Time to go. More deets. More deets, please. Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. Okay, what do you need help with? I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Okay. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. Oh, really? Maybe we could get someone that'll help us with stuff. You know, like... Increased levels on characters, or... You know, a speed boost. She's guarded against people from the Academia because most of her wares don't comply with Academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Okay, we can do that. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. We don't have question privileges. <sighs> Fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. 
I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Okay. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. We can improvise. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. We've got this, Paimon. Don't sweat it. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. Okay. But we only just saw our knowledge capsule for the first time. We don't know how to tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Right, is there any clue you can give us? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? We can use that. We've got that. Oh, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Okay, Elemental Sight will tell us what we need to do. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference in their quality? Okay, just let me do um, Elemental Sight. They look the same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with Elemental Sight. Okay. Boop. Oh, that one's clearly better. It's got an aura around How'd it. How'd it go? Did the you see anything? Not that it. They both glow green, but the one on the left shines brighter. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. Okay. That's because knowledge originates from Ermensoul, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. However, some canned knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive. I mean, kind of impressive. I know not too many people have a vision, so not too many people have that ability. It's kind of almost cheating. <laughs> Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any Mora left over, just keep it. Okay. We're probably gonna spend it all, though. We really want to leave a good impression. Oh, and be sure to I exercise some caution. Things. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? The Popo. Hmm. They belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. We're willing to take the risk. Okay, then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Looking at what Al Haytham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. And on that note... We will pick up here next time. You Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. If you're enjoying the journey and you want to continue progressing the storyline with me, you wish to hear. remember to do all the fun things, the likes, the follows, the subscribes, all that good jazz, because it appeases the algorithm archon and it keeps me in your feed. I hope you all have a great day and stay safe. Yeah.